We're going to start this demonstration off by taking a look at the process to create lags on the Ruckus WAN gateway. Right now we have one connection from IGB1 down to port 12 on our lab switch 20. We're going to go ahead and add another physical interface connection to port 10 on that switch up to IGB2 and then we're going to make that a lag interface. From there, we're going to go ahead and create some VLAN interfaces within the lab network infrastructure so we can get some segmentation across the devices that we have connected in there. All right, before we get started with the configuration from RWG, I actually need to do the switch configuration on that lab switch 20 that I showed in the topology. The first thing that we're going to do is create the lag interface and then associate those switch ports to that lag. So I'm going to call it lag and I'm going to call it lab lag and we're going to make it a dynamic lag and just give it the ID one. So from here now I can specify which ports that I want to put into the lag. So I'm going to say ports ethernet 1110 and ethernet 1112. Before I hit enter on this, um, because I am SSH to the switch and I'm actually connected over port 12 at this point, um, when I hit enter, I'm going to be disconnected from this connection. So if you're going to be making configurations like this, you might want to have console access um, or some other type of concentrator access to the device uh, before making this configuration. Uh, I'm not super worried about this uh, on mine because once I hit enter here, uh, I do know that the ICX goes ahead and deploys that lag um, and I can then make the configurations on the RWG side. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the RWG and we're going to go ahead and create the interface. Um, the lag interface configuration is done under sudo interfaces. I'm going to go ahead and click create new. I'm going to call it lab lag. I'm going to change the interface type from VXLAN to lag. And then I'm going to set the lag protocol to link aggregation control protocol, LACP. So from here, I can then select which interfaces on the RWG that I want to include in this lag. And as we said, we're going to do IGB1 and IGB2. I am not going to choose any IP configuration yet. I actually need to flip the IP configuration from within the uh, network address scaffold. So at this point, uh, with the lag creation or the lag configuration all filled out, I'm ready to click create. And it has configured that lag, but we actually need to go into this lab network uh, 10 address field and change which Ethernet interface it is connected to. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. I am going to change this from IGB1 to select to deselect that interface. Then I'm going to select the pseudo interface lab lag. And then I'm going to choose update. So once we do that, the lab network 10 is now connected to lab lag. And if we look at the lab lag, it is connected to interfaces IGB1 and IGB2. So if I bring my connection back over from putty, I am back online. I can do a show lag. And we can see here my lab lag uh, using port 10 and port 12 is operational for uh, both of those links. So at this point, that lag is good to go. And I now have increased bandwidth for that interface from the RWG uh, to that lab switch 20. So you saw that we had lab network 10. We're going to associate that guy with VLAN 10. And we're going to create another network called lab uh, network 20 that we're going to associate with VLAN 20. We're going to create these uh, VLANs within the RWG and then we're going to go on to the switch side. I do want to quickly point out that I have already uh, created VLAN 10 on lab switch 20 and I have tagged the lag interface going up to 
IGB-1, IGB-2. Now, this is just so I don't lose management connectivity because in my network environment, the way that it is built, um, if I were to just go ahead and deploy the lag interface configurations on the WAN gateway, I would actually then lose connectivity to the switch and then I'd have to go down and get into the console and then create those VLANs and get those tags going. So I've already done that. Again, in your environment, you wanna make sure that you've got these remote console accesses or that you plan out the configuration in advance such as that you don't disconnect yourself from the devices that you're trying to get established. From the RWG side, we have that Lab Network 10 with that DHCP scope that we talked about. Uh, and we also want to add Lab Network 20. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and define some VLAN interfaces for VLAN 10 and 20. So under the VLAN interfaces scaffold, I'm gonna choose create new. I'm gonna call this uh, Lab VLAN 10. I am actually going to uncheck the physical interface here for right now. And I am going to select the pseudo interface as lab lag. I'm then going to set the VLAN ID. So again, we said this was VLAN 10, so I'm choosing 10 for the VLAN ID. And by default, it is going to try to do an auto increment for the VLANs. I only want to create a single VLAN here though, so I'm going to go ahead and from this dropdown, select none. And then under networks, I'm going to leave this blank for now. I will have to come back under the network scaffolding, uh, under the network address scaffolding, and select this lab VLAN. But for right now, I'm gonna leave this blank and choose create. So we've got our lab VLAN 10. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process to create lab VLAN 20. Selecting the pseudo interface again as lab lag, specifying the ID as 20, setting the auto increment to none, not selecting a network, and choosing create. So with the VLAN interfaces configured, the next thing that I wanna do is actually create the network address for that lab network 20. So under that scaffold, I'm gonna choose create new, and we're gonna call it lab network 20. Under ethernet, I am going to deselect this, and I'm actually going to select my VLAN interface that I've already created for network 20, lab VLAN 20. I'm then going to set the network address that I want for this network, which is gonna be 101020one slash 24. I'm also going to make sure that that is set as primary. And I wanna go ahead and create a DHCP pool for this network. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to automatically do so. With all that specified, I'm gonna go ahead and choose create. And we can see lab network 20 is showing that it is connected and associated with lab VLAN 20. I need to do the same thing for lab network 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit lab network 10, deselect the physical interface and select the VLAN interface. Once that's done, I'm gonna choose update. And now we can see both of those network addresses are associated with the VLANs 10 and 20. If we look up to the VLAN interfaces, we can see that both of those are associated to the pseudo interface lab lag. And if we then look at the lab lag, we can see that it is associated to the physical interfaces IGB-1 and IGB-2. So at this point, we are ready to go ahead and set up the tagging within the switch infrastructure to go ahead and finish this out. Back on lab switch 20, we talked about how we already set up VLAN 10 and tagged it for the lag interface, but we need to tag it downstream as well. So under the VLAN 10 configuration, I'm gonna do tagged, E132 is our downstream link to switch 21. I then need to untag um, a few interfaces for VLAN 10 as well. Tagged E111, uh, E111. I then need to create VLAN 20 and tag it to the same interfaces. So uh, VLAN 20 tagged lag one, that is gonna put our lag interface in there as tagged as well as tagged E132. Then I need to untag E112. So we have created VLAN 10. Uh, we have tagged it and untagged it where it needs to be. And then uh, the same thing with 20. Um, tagged it on the uplink and downlink, as well as created those untagged interface uh, for our clients. So at this point, I'll go ahead and save these changes. And I think we're ready to take a look at our DHCP to see what kind of clients are coming in and, and what the spread on the uh, 10 and 20 network is.
under instruments mac dhcp dns we can actually see a list of mac entries as well as the associations to each of the vlans so we can see that we've got five uh, devices connected into vlan 10 and two devices connected into vlan 20. so as we connect additional devices into that lab network we can set untagged ports for either vlan 10 or 20 to get those to associate to the correct network destination